One day all of us have to face death and what if there is a food which helps us to live forever? Queen Shi Huang was the first emperor in the unified China. He was very powerful and rich. He had wealth and fame. But he did not have one thing. That is, he could not live forever. Once he was told that there is an island on which there is a huge mountain with plants grown on this mountain and if someone eats those plants, he could live forever. The king sent his army to search this island, but the army never returned. Then some officials told him that if he starts drinking mercury, he could live forever. On hearing this, he started drinking mercury every day. But he did not know that so much of mercury was poisoning his body. Finally, he died at the age of 49 due to excess of mercury. In the same manner, all the powerful people who tried to become immortal died without even living the full span of life. Today, as we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, Jesus speaks of his own body and blood as the food of eternal life. In the Gospel, Jesus says, I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. We believe that within the Holy Mass, the substance of the bread becomes the substance of the body of Christ. And the substance of wine becomes the substance of the blood of Christ. Whenever we receive the Holy Communion, we taste the divinity of Christ. For some, there is no meaning in the Eucharist. For some, it is just a sign. But for us, Jesus in the Eucharist is not a sign or a symbol. Jesus is really and substantially present in the Blessed Sacrament. During the Holy Mass, we cannot see any external change in the bread and wine. However, after the consecration, although the outward appearance remains the same, the internal substance undergoes a tremendous change. But with our five senses, we cannot notice any difference. But throughout the history, there are incidents of both the appearance as well as the substance of the Holy Communion changed during the Holy Mass. We call them the Eucharistic miracles. In 750 AD, at Lanciano in Italy, a monastic priest doubted the real presence during the Holy Mass. There, the host turned into real flesh and the wine turned into the real blood of Christ. Still we can find these relics in Italy. Also, in recent times, in 1992, in 1994 and 1996, Three Eucharistic miracles took place in Buenos Aires of Argentina. Samples of the above two miracles were tested at scientific labs. All these experiments proved that they carry the blood type and the DNA of the same person. There are more than 100 of Eucharistic miracles. They took place all around the world. These miracles show that Jesus' real body and blood are there in the Holy Eucharist. This miraculous food or Holy Eucharist is Jesus' most precious gift to the humanity. In the Gospel, Jesus tells, Your ancestors ate manna and they died. But those who eat this bread will live forever. All kinds of food in the world give us only the physical nourishment. Holy Eucharist is the only spiritual food which can give us the eternal life. In the second reading, St. Paul tells, The cup of blessing is the communion with the blood of Jesus, and the bread we break 
is the communion with the body of Christ. Jesus in the blessed sacrament continuously reminds us that our God is a God who has pitched his tent among his people. Our God is so near to us in his presence in the Holy Eucharist. In every mass we offer our very life, our sufferings and our pending death to the Lord. By this offering we tap into the very life of God. This mystical moment is a divine life-giving moment. When we mingle our temporary human lives with the divine life of Jesus, we foretaste the eternal life in heaven. Our world today do not want to experience the sad reality of death. And man has been trying to find, to avoid death and to become immortal. Our scientists have been working on a number of projects on immortality such as nanobots inside human body, digitalizing human consciousness, gene therapy and cloning of the organs. In fact, already there is a company which keeps human bodies in deep freezed chambers until there is a technology to bring them back to life. Already they have about 160 bodies frozen inside these chambers. However, the scientific effort is to make humans immortal in this earthly life. How many do you think would like to live a never-ending life on this earth? The earth is already overpopulated and billions of people are grumbling about the sicknesses, sufferings and problems of this earthly life. If there is any chance of becoming immortal, for sure, majority will never expect earthly life which is subjected to suffering. But people would prefer that immortal life to be a spiritual reality. That eternal life should be a one filled with peace, joy and true satisfaction. Daily we experience that our human life is becoming more and more miserable with all these tragedies around the world. Therefore, today the Lord Jesus is giving us this priceless spiritual food, his holy body and blood for us, in order to enter into the eternal bliss. We can really experience a glimpse of this eternal life if we devoutly take part in the Holy Communion, the Holy Mass. This Sunday, many of us are attending to the Holy Mass after three months. So, let us try to focus on every word in the Mass. Let us joyfully sing those hymns. Let us attentively listen to the Word of God and to the homily. Let us passionately offer our pains and joys at the offertory. Let us devoutly worship the Blessed Sacrament at the Eucharistic Rite. Finally, let us receive the Holy Communion in a worthy manner. If you want to experience eternal life, receive the most holy body and blood of Jesus and come into the communion in the very life of Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Amen.